Buying and selling property is complicated and it's usually real estate agents who are in charge of the process, love them or hate them. They are responsible for 99% of the transactions. But are there any controls in place? Fair Trading has rules, regulations and responsibilities covering the entire procedure. A real estate agent is involved in what is often the biggest financial transaction in people's lives. It is therefore understandable that there are a number of acts, legislation and rules that relate to real estate agents. The real estate agent must have knowledge and understanding of the Property Stock and Business Agent Act and regulations and any other relevant legislation. The second rule is that they must comply with their fiduciary obligations which are contained within the Act. The third rule is what we all see as common sense. It includes honesty, fairness and professionalism. The fourth rule relates to skill, care and diligence of the real estate agent. The fifth is that they not engage in high pressure tactics, harassment or unconscionability. Those are just the top five. There are many more rules and all of them are available at the Fair Trading website. A real estate agent needs to exercise care as to what statements they make, what pictures they publish and what they say about the property. One of the most important areas is related to price. There are very strict rules about what representations a real estate agent may make. A real estate agent needs to ensure that they've given accurate information to both the vendor and the purchaser in respect of the price. It's often a temptation to indicate to the buyer that the price is actually lower than what they anticipate it will be, which can lead to increased foot traffic through the house, which makes the agent look very good to the vendor. A real estate agent may tell a vendor that they're going to get more for the property than they actually are to secure the listing. Most people will go with the person who's given them the highest value for their property. It is an offense, in fact, against the Property Stock and Business Agent Act for a real estate agent to underquote to a buyer or to misrepresent in any way to the seller of a property in respect of the price that the property is likely to obtain. Fair Trading receives complaints on a regular basis from both sellers and purchasers of property in respect to pricing. Fair Trading can request substantiation. That means what were the reasons why they came to that price. These factors would include recent valuations, any comparable sales in the same area, seasonal factors like when there's a lot more property on the market, like springtime. Economic factors are also important. They would include things like interest rate increases or decreases. If Fair Trading then knocks on the agent's door asking for substantiation as to the price that was delivered on a certain property, they can then go to their sales file and produce that information. To help real estate agents get it right, they can come to our website and look up the estimated price guideline, which can be most helpful in making that determination. Advertising can be a little bit tricky sometimes because agents need to clearly and accurately portray the property in both the literature and also the photographs that accompany the advertisements. Agents should be very careful of the hiding or concealing of unfavorable characteristics such as perhaps power lines. There is disciplinary processes which may impact the real estate agent's license. It may also result in a fine. There's also the possibility of prosecution in the local court. There are a number of ways of selling a house. The most common is by private treaty. The sales process begins with the preparation of the contract for sale. Once the property goes out on the market and offers are sought uh, with a price listed, negotiations are entered into between prospective buyers and the vendor. And once the agreement is reached, contracts are exchanged. There is a possibility before the contract is exchanged that a second purchaser may come in with a higher bid. And it's not until you have that signed, exchanged contract that you have this purchase locked in. Private treaties, there's typically a five-day cooling-off period. Once the cooling-off period has expired, there's now a binding contract, and the purchaser is bound to purchase the property, and the vendor is also bound to sell it. The deposit typically happens at the time of exchange, and usually it's 10% of the property price. Settlement is the process of the buyer paying off the final balance of the purchase price. Probably one of the best pieces of advice we can give to real estate agents is to stick to the facts and be as accurate as possible. If you have any questions about the sales process, just give Fair Trading a call. They're here to help.